Hi everyone, it's me, Linda B, and welcome back. So today I wanted to do a video. I know I did a video already about the Democratic Party, um, but I want to do one with PragerU, do a reaction to the inconvenient truth of the Democratic Party. I want you guys to really engage. Give me your comments below and let's really talk about it together. We can go back and forth if you like, but respectfully. But before I get into it, I want you guys to remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel on my way to 20,000 subscribers by the end of April. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I met my March goal by, by the grace of God. Thank you so much. Also, follow me on Facebook at The Real Linda Bentley on Facebook and Instagram. And also you can email me at chat with me, Linda B at gmail.com. And I really appreciate the emails and the support with some video ideas. I'm going to try to do as many of them as I can. So without further ado, let's get into it. When you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party comes to mind? The Republicans or the Democrats? Most people would probably say the Democrats, but this answer is incorrect. Since its founding in 1829, the Democratic Party has fought against every major civil rights initiative and has a long history of discrimination. The Democratic Party defended slavery, started the Civil War, opposed Reconstruction, founded the Ku Klux Klan, imposed segregation, perpetrated lynchings, and fought against the Civil Rights Acts of the 1950s and 1960s. That is a long list of evil right there. Defended slavery, started the Civil War, opposed Reconstruction, and Reconstruction was when, um, you know, following the Civil War, and after, of course, the Emancipation Proclamation, Black men were given the ability to vote. Black men were, and also the ability to run for and hold political office. That was a very brief moment in time. I mean, it was 1865 to 1877, so about 12 years. That's what Reconstruction is. Of course, we know what the Ku Klux Klan is, a terrorist organization. They imposed segregation, which separated people, you know, Black only, white only, no black and whites could go to school together and, and all of that perpetrated lynchings, unfortunately, and fought against civil rights. And now they say they are the party of all these things, but they're trying to hide behind their past. But you guys, whatever something is rooted in, that's the fruit that it bears. Remember the Welfare Institute. I've done other videos on the institution of welfare and how it separated the Black family and how it caused there to be a lot of crime and teen pregnancy and gangs coming up out of that because of the one-parent home. We're meant to have two parents in the home, but God bless those one-parent homes that have done a good job. In contrast, the Republican Party was founded in 1854 as an anti-slavery party. Its mission was to stop the spread of slavery into the new Western territories with the aim of abolishing it entirely. This effort, however, was dealt a major blow by the Supreme Court in the 1857 case, Dred Scott versus Sandford. The court ruled that slaves aren't citizens, they're property. Mm -hmm. The seven justices who voted in favor of slavery, all Democrats, the two justices who dissented, both Republicans. Mm. The slavery question was, of course, ultimately resolved by a bloody civil war. Mm. The commander in chief during that war was the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves. Six days after the Confederate army surrendered, John Wilkes Booth, a Democrat, assassinated President Lincoln. Lincoln's vice president, a Democrat named Andrew Johnson assumed the presidency. Mm. But Johnson adamantly opposed Lincoln's plan to integrate the newly freed slaves into the South's economic and social order. Johnson and the Democratic Party were unified in their opposition to the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment, which gave Blacks citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave Blacks the vote. 
All three passed only because of universal Republican support. During the era of Reconstruction, federal troops stationed in the South helped secure rights for the newly freed slaves. Hundreds of black men were elected to Southern state legislatures as Republicans, and 22 black Republicans served in the U.S. Congress by 1900. The Democrats did not elect a black man to Congress until 1935. But after Reconstruction ended, when the federal troops went home, Democrats roared back into power in the South. Mm -hmm. They quickly reestablished white supremacy across the region with measures like black codes, laws that restricted the ability of blacks to own property and run businesses, and they imposed poll taxes and literacy tests used to subvert black citizens' right to vote. And how was all of this enforced? by terror, much of it instigated by the Ku Klux Klan, founded by a Democrat, Nathan Bedford Forrest. As historian Eric Foner, himself a Democrat, notes, in effect, the Klan was a military force serving the interests of the Democratic Party. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, mm -hmm. shared many views with the Klan. He resegregated many federal agencies and even screened the first movie ever played at the White House the racist film, The Birth of a Nation. A that I've, you know, I recently found out about Woodrow Wilson, guys, um, a Democrat president, of course, and he was behind. He he shared a lot of views with the Klan. And it looked like at one point, <laughs> pretty much all the Democrats were for slavery. They were against integration, but the Republicans were against slavery and were for integration. And how did we get to this point where Black people vote Democrat? We, I got to do another video. <laughs> I'm giving you history right now. Go back and look at the videos on the Democratic Party, the Inconvenient Truth. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, not the Inconvenient Truth. That's what we're doing right now. But there's another video that I did about the Democratic Party and the Ku Klux Klan. Um, there's another video that I did about that. And also do, do look at my video on the Inconvenient Truth of the Republican Party. Because the, the Republican Party fought hard against slavery and um, they fought for women's rights as well. This this whole thing has got me shook with how many black people think that the party switched when they did not switch. Democratic Party just became extremely clever in how to deal with black people. Originally entitled The Klansman, a few decades later, the only serious congressional opposition to the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964 came from Democrats. 80% of Republicans in Congress supported the bill, less than 70% of Democrats did. Democratic senators filibustered the bill for 75 days until Republicans mustered the few extra votes needed to break the log jam. And when all of their efforts to enslave Blacks, keep them enslaved, and then keep them from voting had failed, the Democrats came up with a new strategy. If Black people are going to vote, they might as well vote for Democrats. As President Lyndon Johnson was purported to have said about the Civil Rights Act, I'll have them as voting Democrat for 200 years. So now the Democratic Party prospers on the votes of the very people it has spent much of its history oppressing. Democrats falsely claim that the Republican Party is the villain, when in reality, it's the failed policies of the Democratic Party that have kept Blacks down. Massive government welfare has decimated the Black family. Opposition to school choice has kept them trapped in failing schools. Politically correct policing has left Black neighborhoods defenseless against violent crime. So when you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party should come to mind? I'm Carol Swain, professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt University for Prager University. Wow, a lot of good information in that. And it's good to learn. It's not good to go around believing things that are not true. And so this is very good information. And I had already brought up the fact about reconstruction that she brought it up in here because I knew about that. And I knew, of course, I had already brought up. I was talking ahead of the video. Sorry, guys. I hadn't really seen all of this, but I just um, 
I just know that this is what is going on, how the um, Democrats and I'll just give you like a little nugget of how the Democrats managed to get the black vote. What happened was when those laws passed for black people to be able to vote, Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ, he he was the VP under JFK. And so after JFK was assassinated, then Lyndon Baines Johnson became the president. He said, I'll have those ends voting Democrat for the next 200 years. So the Democratic Party went out looking for somebody black that was very influential. And at the time, that influential person was Martin Luther King Jr., you know, the famous civil rights leader. They used Martin Luther King Jr. who said, okay, blacks got the right to vote. We're going to help them get registered to vote. We will help you, you know, do this and that. But they got, but the whole thing was, you got to bring the vote to our party, bring the vote to us. And so what King did was, you know, the black politicians, black civil, not black politicians, mostly the black civil rights leaders and black preachers brought in, you know, talked to the people and told them, you know, we're going to get you guys ready to vote and vote Democrat. So that was the trade off. You guys, you know, if you will do this, you know, get the black people registered to vote, we'll help you. But they got to vote Democrat. And also welfare was instituted, which only gave money if the woman was not married. So if the man was out of the house, she got money. If the man was in the house, no money. So when you pay people not to get married, they tend not to get married. And so that's what welfare did to the black family. It split the family up, similar to how it did during slavery when they trade, they broke families up, you know, when they were sold off to different plantations. So there's a lot of similarity between the Democratic Party of yesterday as well as Democratic Party of today. That's how I know it didn't switch because Democrats, you know, were for slavery. They didn't want their slaves to know how to read. Now Democrats are not for school choice. They want everybody, we want the kids to stay in the schools reading below grade level. And they're not for school choice. They're for the teachers unions. The teachers unions have a monopoly. So the kids, they, they read below grade level, and that's what the Democrats want. And if you look at Democrat-led cities, there's high crime, high poverty where Black people are, you know, the schools are not doing well. It's just a mess, just the violence and vitriol. They don't want policing, so the crime goes up. And there's a lot of um, camaraderie between the mainstream media and the Democratic Party as well, because they only tend to show, you know, when the police officer is white and there is a black unarmed victim. When in actuality, you have that same scenario when both the police officer and the victim are either black or white. But they only show it when the police officer is white and the victim is black and it causes black people to go out into the streets to get angry and do those riots and then BLM. Black Lives Matter rose to prominence and they did, didn't give any money to the communities that they said they were going to help. And none of the families of the victims saw not one red cent, according to articles and information that I've read. And yeah, I know I'm talking a lot, <laughs> but I just wanted you guys to know the parties did not switch. OK, they didn't. There's too many similarities between the Democrats of old and the Democrats today. So hope you guys learned a lot. Please leave me your comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. On my way to 20,000 subscribers by the end of April. You guys be blessed. And as I always say, march on, warriors.